everybody. It looks like people are uh, straggling in. We seem to still have a lot of cards, uh, name tags out there. But uh, I think in the ens essence, in the interest of getting started uh, and to meet some of the time schedule from our introductory speakers, I will um, open the session. As a chair of the steering committee, I want to welcome you on behalf of the steering committee, as well as the donors and the organizing partners to this symposium. Uh, we have certainly a very busy schedule today, and I'm going to try to keep my remarks fairly quick and fairly short. Before we begin, um, <clears throat> however, I'd like to take a few minutes to remind you, take your cell phones out right now and turn them to quiet or off, please, everybody. Give you a minute to do that. And while we're doing that, um, just want to remind you that on page seven of your agenda and the abstract booklet, you have a lot of in general information. Uh, in particular, for those of you who may want to have messages sent here, please make sure they call the C grant number and somebody will bring the uh, message over this way. Uh, also, do not leave any valuables in this room or any other room because we don't have any way of securing them. So uh, please make sure that you have the uh, things that you care about with you at all times. As you notice, we have a continental breakfast here. Uh, we have really tried to live up to what our, um, our interest is, and that is sustainability. And we have um, ordered food from caterers who are willing to recycle just about everything out there. So please make sure that you use the bins that they have so that we can properly recycle everything and reuse what we can. Um, uh, I'll talk a little bit before lunch about some of the options. Um, there are a few other announcements I'll make, and we'll probably make them again as well. The um, architects who have signed up for credits, I think there are something like 18 or 18 and a half credits, please be sure that you sign in at the front desk so that you get credit for these credits. And the same for uh, the planners for the AICP um, maintenance credits you need to sign in at the front desk if you haven't already done so. So with uh, that, except for the fact that bathrooms are on each floor, and before we break for lunch, uh, we'll review for you the complicated uh, afternoon session where you will have an opportunity to go to five different consecutive areas. And rather than try to give you all that information now, I think we'll wait until later. So I've asked. Uh, and we've been very pleased to have her accept Dr. Maria Zuber, who is the E.A. Griswold Professor of Geophysics here at MIT, and she's also the Vice President for Research, and I've asked her to make a few remarks uh, about MIT and whatever you would like. Great. Thank you. Well, welcome to MIT. Um, the Earth is changing in ways that we don't adequately understand. We do know, on the basis of data, that in the past 30 years, the Earth's surface has warmed by 0.6 degrees C, with warming also observed in the lower atmosphere and the upper oceans. We do not know the fractional human contribution to this warming, but quoting the National Research Council's report, America's Climate Choices, the preponderance of the scientific evidence points to human activities, especially the release of CO2 and other heat-trapping greenhouse gases, into the atmosphere as the most likely cause for most of the global warming that has occurred over the last 50 years or so. So our understanding of the present and future climate is uncertain, and uncertainty brings risk. There is risk that this assessment of global warming, which is supported by the overwhelming majority of scientists at MIT and worldwide, is correct. There is further risk that warming will continue and perhaps accelerate. The recent National Climate Assessment, produced by a team of over 300 experts and rigorously reviewed, reports that effects of global warming are already evident and are expected to become increasingly disruptive across the nation throughout this century and beyond. This risk is a motivating factor for MIT's initiative on the environment, which we announced last month. Our founding director, Susan Solomon, 
has articulated a bold vision to apply a truly interdisciplinary approach to advance our understanding of the environment, including the climate system, by combining MIT's strong grounding in fundamental science with our penchant for engineering practical solutions that are mindful of policy and economic considerations. This initiative will unite and amplify efforts already underway on our campus in the joint program on the science and policy of global change, the C MIT C grant program, the Lorentz Center dedicated to learning how climate works, and the MIT Energy Initiative that focuses on low carbon solutions. We need to delve into the complex workings of the climate system. We need reliable models that include adequate physics and chemistry to understand what a warmer climate would mean for short-term weather patterns, including precipitation norms and extreme events. We need to quantify the risk of what a warmer climate would mean for the natural and built environment and for human, animal, and plant life, including our food and water supplies. Being ever mindful of the uncertainties, we must assess potential social, social policy and economic impacts. In parallel with the quest to understand the workings of the climate system and to mitigate the release of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, we need to work together to take prudent and sensible action to adapt to our changing world. Among the locations on Earth where this change is most evident and where future change will be most disruptive are coastal cities. And that is why you are all here today. The risk is too great and the potential consequences too damaging to kick this can down the road any longer. Our constituents, customers, students, neighbors, and families are depending on us to take this challenge and develop an informed path forward. In his novel, Autumn Leaves, author Andre Gade notes, there are many things that seem impossible only so long as one does not attempt them. So it's perhaps fitting to confront this challenging topic on this campus where, when someone mentions that a problem seems impossible to solve, the usual response is sign me up. 